Hello again, it's yours truly, Mr. Pete, and this is edition number 51 of my This and That series. It's been a long time since I did an episode of this, so I have just an awful lot to cover, uh, viewer gifts, and just miscellaneous things and updates. So I hope you enjoy this, and be sure and watch my 1,050 other shop videos. So let's get started. I am very well aware that I have beaten the subject to death regarding my former business, Peterson Products. But as I run into these old projects, you know, I, I like to reminisce to myself, if nobody else, but I did come across two things in the last month, so let me show you these. So in my original brochure from 45 years ago, there's the C-clamp kit. Remember, I was selling the plaster patterns, not the C-clamp. And these were meant for teachers. And there's some of my original artwork, if you want to call that artwork, black and white photos that I sent to the printer. But th those are the patterns, and that's a finished uh, C-clamp, and so on. I guess you don't need to see all of those. Some of them are pretty pathetic. I was no photographer, and I'm still not. But anyway, there is... Uh, an actual C-clamp is the only one I have, even though we probably made a thousand of them. And I do mean probably a thousand of them, but, you know, I told you I got so sick of things, I, I threw them out. But there, I'm hesitant to show my original drawings, and boy, was I criticized. You know, you did this wrong. That's not how you dimension. You know, people are, some people are so hateful, but there's one of my original tracings uh, that I gave to the kids. But really, this was not suitable uh, for a, a beginning class. They just needed to see where the drill press was and start drilling and filing. So let's take a look at this sample. Also I made these gating uh, drawings that every teacher got and notice that the gates were already in uh, the plaster pattern so all they had to do was put a sprue in there. So I don't know if that was useful to them or not but didn't get a whole lot of feedback then. Also there was a complete set of machining instructions and a bill of materials with every one of these ten projects. So anyway, where did this come from? Off topic again. Well, I'm down at <clears throat> the local scrapyard. I don't call them recycling, I call them a junkyard. Okay, so there as I was selling him some scrap, and I think I got fourteen dollars for a big load I was cleaning out my garage. There by the scale on the ground was this. He had set it aside possibly to use there, you know, for whatever their purposes were. But there I said, hey, Glenn, can I have that? And he's, of course, he's kind of reluctant because that's 10 cents worth of aluminum. <laughs> but here from Joel Preston, and I vaguely remember him, and he got a C- minus on it. And uh, that's what that C-clamp project looked like. I know it was aluminum, and you're going to say those will break, and they did break right here if you really clamp down, but they were meant for woodworking. And that was really kind of a neat project, and I suppose tens of thousands were made throughout the country, not just here in my school, because I sold, this was the most popular pattern that I sold, and there, there must have been thousands of these that went out from my basement right here where I'm standing. Who cares? Well, the next project I want to talk about is a motor base. We made several projects that required electric motors. Well, where are you going to get electric motors? And I asked the kids to bring them in, and uh, occasionally they actually would. But they generally were motors from appliances that did not have bases because they were end mounted. You know how they were and, and washers and dryers and wherever the kids did scrounge them up. So I came up with a project of making a motor base and that's what it looked like. Here it is in uh, the brochure. And let's see, one more picture I wanted to show you. Well, I guess that's the so-called artwork. Well, this did, we made a lot of these. And this was basically a V-block, but the kids had to drill holes into this, as you see right here, and then drill and tap holes into the electric motor. Well, you know how well that worked. They wouldn't stop. I said, drill it shallow now, just to, you know, we've got to thread it. Well, they wouldn't stop drilling until they had copper shavings coming out. Well, that was the end of that motor. Plan B. So now, flashback three weeks ago, 
I was visiting my sister over in Peru and she said, Mr. Peterson, can you tell me what these motors are in the basement? And she had three or four motors down there in her dungeon, and I mean, it was a mess. But I said, I was shocked. I said, where in the earth did you get this motor? Because there's one of my original motor bases, but a different design than what I showed you. And that was my redesign after uh, the kids drilled and ruined a lot of motors. So I'm going to take it off of this real quickly. But the only fault with this was that motors varied in diameter and not all of them fit into this radius of this particular casting. So that was a disappointment to me. But the motor was held on with, uh, with banded cl uh, clamps. I used to buy that in a 50-foot roll, and I've talked about banded clamps before. That was a bugger. I had to do them all because the kids couldn't <laughs> figure out how to, to use the bandit tool. But do not take this as a criticism of, of kids. I get that. For, oh, you're just terrible the way you talk about students. Well, I'm telling you the way it was, and a lot of it was funny. And if you didn't have a sense of humor, you better not be a teacher, a shop teacher anyway. All right, I'm going to take it off of this because this is scrap anyway, but let's take a look at how this casting looks. Holy mackerel, that's like a double piece there. I can't get through it with that. Okay, boy, those bands were on there tight. Did you see them snap? I guess maybe I didn't get a film of that, but old Westinghouse motor, I think. No, it's a Maytag, it says. That. Okay, so that is the casting. I never did sell those patterns uh, in this design. And we must have made a bunch of those. I don't remember, remember much about it until I came into my sister's basement and saw that. But that was an alternate to the original Peterson Products design. Ill-conceived, of course. And also, I was going to show you this Makita that I bought, die grinder. I bought that for my buddy Dwayne for 20 bucks. It's brand new, but it sure vibrates a lot with uh, this size of cutoff wheel on it. So I, w I wish I could slow it down a little bit. I guess I can, but it, it is not variable speed. But it is, I think, pretty high quality Makita. 20 bucks. Paul Strainy or Strany from out in uh, Pennsylvania sent me this uh, little uh, bubba sign, so you'll see that from time to time in my videos. Thank you, Paul. Ben Bon or Bohr, I can't quite read his name, and he's out of Liberty, Missouri, sent me this tool. He wasn't quite sure what it is or was, but I believe it's just a lathe tool, specially ground probably to make an internal groove of some kind. Whoever ground this sure did a beautiful job, and it apparently was done on a surface grinder, not freehand, because it's really nice. Uh, thank you for that, Ben. Probably put it to use someday. Have you noticed in the Horror Freight catalog that you get, I think they are getting a little bit better grade of tools, because quite often they're offering uh, similar tools in what they call good, better, and best. Now, Sears Roebuck used to do that. Do you remember that in their catalog? They always had three lines. And, and even here, with these welders, there's a good, better, and best, which really means uh, maybe bad, better, and baddest. I, I don't know. I haven't tried them. Maybe they're perfectly good. Let me know if they are. Thank you to Jay Miller, who is a model maker and a viewer of my channel and a photographer. And I'll post these pictures at the end of the video, but here's some of the engines that he did. But what I really wanted to show you here more than anything, and he's a graphic artist and all of that, and he sent me this model of a piston valve, and this is really based on... This copy right here from uh, International Textbook Company, 19, what is it, 1924, and it's a uh, sliding, this is just beautifully made. You can slide the valve back and forth and slide the piston back and forth to explain to somebody the valving system on a steam engine and to talk about 
lead and all of that which is a little bit beyond me but this this is really beautifully made and inscribed here by Jay so thank you Jay for that thank you Tim Turner out of Magnolia Texas for sending me a nice care package here with several items and he is the man that uh, made the halo light on my milling machine that you see from time to time. The, the light that goes up around uh, the spindle of his hound dog machinery. But anyway, uh, here is a, a stop that will bolt onto the back of, I believe, a Kurt Weiss. Now, I've got a Kurt Weiss, but it's a little smaller than this. I checked it, so I might have to redrill this. But there we go, and it's called a Versa Stop Arm. And also in the package are a bunch of slugs here. Now, really, these slugs came from the uh, the halo, halo light. So let me show you those real quick. But before I do, here are... He said these were cut-off blades, but I don't believe they are. And they boy, are they heavy. They are carbide. But since there's no clearance on them... I, hate, I bet those are 20 bucks each if you had to buy them. But I'm going to use them as parallels. Because if you look at them this way, there, there's no clearance and there isn't any way of grinding them. And I did touch them to the grinding wheel and boy, they won't, they won't grind at all. Let's go over to the milling machine real quickly. So here's the halo light on the milling machine. I've got to unplug it here. This is really nice. I, I use that all the time. You probably notice that in my videos. But these slugs were cut out from here and were waste stock. So that's machined from a solid billet of aluminum. That's a lot of machining. In a recent episode of uh, What Is It? I showed this chuck. And what I forgot to tell you, uh, the, probably the most important thing, is that the drill bit could be changed while the machine is running. And I have a little trouble pronouncing gross truck or grunts truck, whatever it is. But here's the patent. Let's do a close-up of that. There's the patent number. This is from Vintage Machinery. You can see how it's made. Or can you? And you can see there's no key required. And I guess you pronounce that Gronkvist drill, <laughs> drill chuck company. No key. I did a recent video on crescent wrenches, adjustable wrenches, talked about them and the different alloys, crest alloy and so on. And you know, there's always a lot of criticism about these wrenches. I'm not sure just why. You know, they're pretty darn handy. Not meant for working on your BMW, admittedly. But uh, a uh, fellow YouTuber by the name of Vernon Courier, who calls himself the mature Patriot, and he's been sickly lately. I hope you feel better, Vernon. But he sent along this adjust -a box, which I always thought was a novelty wrench. And initially, I thought, well, what I'll do here is a destructive test to see if these are any good. But he swears by them, even said that his dad used them. So maybe they are good, but I do tend to think of any fit all wrench, you know, as to be not all that great and this to me looks like a typical Father's Day gift or a Christmas gift for a stocking stuffer for somebody that already has everything by a well-intentioned wife that think he's going to <laughs> think she's going to love this but thank you uh, Vernon for this let me show you the patent on this from a man who thought he would get rich and maybe he did there's the patent number Tom Neff patented this wrench in 1957. There is still tremendous discussion and controversy on how to use an adjustable wrench. I still don't think it makes much difference, but in 1959, while working at Debo Hardware, a kindly customer corrected me on how to use one and that's the first I ever heard of it and I've used a lot of wrenches I try to use them the right way but sometimes I just grab them and start turning 
Out of the clear blue sky, I got a package in the mail, an early Christmas present from one Mr. John Richardson near Fort Myers, Florida. You know, that's Edison territory, Edison and Ford winter territory. But of all things here is a beautiful book, and I thank you so much, John. This is going to make great winter reading when it's cold here in Illinois, called Uncommon Friends, Still in the Shrink Wrap. And this is the story about Edison, Ford, Firestone, and their great camping trips. And of all things, when I was recently vacationing in Branson, Missouri, I went to a bookstore. I think they call it Books a Million. And I sat there for 15 minutes with this book just looking at the pictures, but I was too cheap to buy it. And now I'm glad I didn't because I got a copy of it. So that's, that's going to be fun. If you guys are Edison and Ford fans, and I think I've read every book ever published on those two guys, and there's, I, I'm sure there's just an awful lot of urban, uh, not urban legends, but, you know, these guys were legendary, and you don't know how much of this stuff is actually true. Thank you, John Glass, who lives up in Downers Grove, Illinois, for sending me a box, and he said he ran across some brand new sea clamps, and he knows that I like Colombian vices, so there they are. Some, uh, a pair of Colombian, I didn't know Colombian made sea clamps. 75 millimeter, not three inch. Still with the tag on them, so thank you, John. Thank you to Brett McGee, and he's from uh, Florida, Palm Beach County, and he's on, uh, the uh, rescue team there, or fire department, and he sent me a long sleeve type of t-shirt, and I tell you it's so cold here, I'm going to get good use out of that, because it's just, I can't wear short sleeves in the winter. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. I'm doing a four or five part series on how to make dividing head plates. And of all things, from California, Phyllis and Dan Schmidt sent me, along with a nice letter, two index plates. And actually, it's four because they're extra thick and they're double-sided. So I believe I'll probably make a video on how to adapt this onto one of my dividing heads because this is too large a hole. It's the wrong hole pattern. I don't know what brand they are, but... Uh, I think you'll see a video on those. So those are much appreciated. Very hard to find. I would say that most of them get separated from the dividing heads at auctions and are either either thrown away or whatever. People don't know what they're what they're really for. So and be sure and watch those videos because boy, there's a bunch of them. Thank you, Dan and Phyllis. I often talk about Tommy, my neighbor, and his spite mowing. It's a standing gag, but I was in Boston last summer, and there's the skinny house. And you can see how really narrow it is, and as a matter of fact, it's called the skinny house, the spite house. And this goes way back to 1862 during the Civil War, when some neighbors had a fight, and one said, I'll show you, and built this little skinny house between the other one. So I got a kick out of that. I have a few items here from Banggood, you know, they'll give me about anything I want, but I ordered this camera here, and I can't, Waizu or something, but it, it's a, like a GoPro, I gotta learn how to use it, but it has a micro gimbal stabilizer, and this is pretty neat, I have to admit, watch the, the lens move around, it's on a gimbal. I don't know if that's showing up or not, is it? So I'm hope, I hope I'm able to use this. It's way too wide angle. That's one thing I don't like about these action cameras. I don't need 170 degree angle. I need something less than that, but more than what this Sony camera is giving me. When you order things from Banggood, it takes six weeks, by the way, and everything comes in a bag and is poorly packed. I just got to tell them that. But in this bag, and separate, so I got over a six-week period, many different shipments. 
But you recall a recent video where I checked the accuracy of some squares? Well, I thought that I would do that with this. I, I don't really know if I will, but here's a couple little squares with knife edges. They're only 80 millimeters. I thought they'd be bigger than that. But uh, I, I already did a preliminary check and they really look good. I don't know how they can sell something like this. I got them free. I don't know how they can sell something like this and ship it to the United States. And this is about $8 only. Comes in a little case. Complete with directions. And since they don't package things well, you know, the box is absolutely mutilated. I mean, they're as bad as the U.S. Post Office. Well, this comes through the Post Office, so maybe it happened here in America. But in this one, and I cannot figure this out, I did not order this, but I ordered some of these one other time, a year ago. These are little brass governors, and all of a sudden I get another one. Luckily it wasn't damaged, it was well packed in the bubble wrap, but as you can see the box is mutilated. And then I also ordered several flashlights. Now these take special batteries, I'll show you the batteries, they came later, and the charger, but boy are these bright, there's a couple of these. And here's the other flashlight, I have no idea why they put it in such a nice box, it looks like it's a Fannie Mae candy. But this also uses these batteries. I don't, they're NICAD, no, not NICAD, Leon, something or another. I have the batteries upstairs and they're rechargeable. And here is the recharger. Not a recharger, just charger, USB. So I have to charge up those batteries and get these flashlights going. So thank you to Banggood. For this stuff. Thank you very much. An anonymous donor gave me these two flashlights. He doesn't want his name mentioned, but I appreciate that. And one of them has a built-in charger, you know, and there, there's the cable. The other one did not have a battery. He told me what kind of batteries to get, and they use the same batteries as these ones that I got from Banggood. So from Banggood I ordered four of these rather expensive and believe it or not they're Samsung they're Samsung batteries and uh, I'm going to equip these off a of camera so I got some very bright lights to use actually sometimes they're too bright if you swing it around and hit yourself in the eyes with them I mean it's just blinding some of these flashlights have other features like flashing and all that. That's nonsense and it's annoying because some of the switches are multi settings, you know, brightness, dim, and flashing. So you have to go through all of those each time. But thank you to that anonymous donor and uh, let's get on with it. Do you remember my video very recently where I rebuilt this speed vise? It was totally mutilated in here. I can't find the old plate. I wanted to show you what it looked like, but it looks pretty good now that I reconditioned it. But then shortly after I finished this, within days, I ran across another one at an auction and bought it. And you talk about bad condition. I, I've, I've really never seen one much worse than this. And I bought it. And I paid a lot more than I would have thought because it's scrap. And I was going to make another video on it, but I suppose it's too repetitious to, to uh, redo it like I did this one. Unless I get a lot of people saying, go ahead and do it. But I already found a plate for it, but it would be quite a job to recondition this one. Bubba owned it. Well, that completes this video. Rather long. Thank you for watching. Be sure and watch my thousand, well over a thousand other videos. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.